Oh, God, this is a special video for our sister, Carrie Ann Giddings. I must first say that this is not a video that I wanted to do, but it's something about this particular video she made tonight, her voice was a different tone than it, that it usually is in. And I said, she's a lot calmer. And I was listening to her, and it seems like she um, has a question about her, not her spiritual walk, but about the depth of her intuitiveness. And she may be kind of, uh, uh, she's scary, and you may have some kind of questions about it. And you did ask for people to give their take on it. I, too had a very still have a very special calling and raised in the Pentecostal church like I was I can't say that that had an influence on me because I knew the voice of God before my mother even told me who this was and it's like you know when you smile you have a best friend and a comforter and and then all of a sudden, somebody comes to you and say, let me introduce you to who you need to help you. And so in my mind, I thought I had to give up this friend that I had and learn about this new friend that died for my sin. So that was just like a conflict of interest for a while. But I'm trying not to rush myself. Oh, another thing that's so scary. And I wasn't going to do this video, but I started feeling compelled. And I, and I said, I, just, I mean, because a lot of most of the things you talk about, I do not agree. And but when you were doing your top 20, you said, Mary. And I said, oh, is she talking to me? And I said, oh, my God, please don't. I just God, please don't do me like that. This is my heart monitor. If you guys wonder what that is, it's for a test. And then I ignored it. I said, oh, I'm still not going to make this video. Maybe two, maybe a minute later, she calls Mary again like that. I said, oh, God. So this is especially for you. You could take it or leave it. But like I said, I, I was born with this, whatever this is. And the voice that I heard, I heard it when I was in the third grade and uh, I had lost my spelling book and we had a teacher that would just whip you for nothing. If you had to go to the bathroom, you can go, but you're going to get a whip. And when you come back, you're going to stand on a block, a square on one foot, and you're going to hold at least 10 books. So she was mean. And I had lost my spelling book and I was able to sit on with a classmate and try to, you know, make like, you know, we just sit real close together. But we would look in the pigeonholes and everywhere. We couldn't find it. So my friend says, Mary, you don't have to pray to Jesus because we don't we can't find your book. And that man it was serious. So that particular night, that very night, I said my prayers. I follow God in heaven, hallowed be thy name, blah blah blah. God bless me, mom, daddy, mama, all the members of the family. And then I said, Jesus, please help me find my spelling book. And I didn't say this out loud. I'm just praying, you know, within, but praying to myself. Then I heard a voice says, you'll find your spelling book tomorrow. It's going to be a little hard on you, but you'll find it. I opened my eyes and I said, who is this lady? I thought it was my sister, but the voice was a little too deep. My sister was sound asleep. I look in the ceiling and I said, oh, I don't know what that was. But anyway, I went on to sleep. Next morning, I'm on my way to school, get across, across the street with the cross and God. The same voice says, remember, you're going to find, find your spelling book today. I said, oh. I remember somebody, that, that voice told me that last night. I got happy for a second. And then, you know, forgot about it again. During, after lunch, Miss Haswell, this main, mean, mean teacher, she calls me up. She said, Mary Sims, 
come up here to my desk. I said, oh, what have I done, Miss Haswell? You just don't go to her desk because you're in trouble. And I knew I had lost a book, but I said, man. And then she pulled a drawer open, and that's where she kept her strap, this big old belt. She said, where's your spelling book? I said, I don't know, Miss Haswell. I don't know. I lost it. How long has it been lost? I don't know. I don't know. And by that time, I was laying on the floor, kicking and rolling. Miss Haswell reached in her drawer, and I'm all ready for that whooping. This woman had my spelling book in her hand. She said, get up, gal. Get off that floor. I ain't going to whoop you. You keep up with your book. And I managed to get up. I'm still crying. Take my little spelling book and go back to my seat and still crying. But I did not remember what the voice had said until I was getting ready to say my prayers again that night. And I said, oh, that's what that voice told me. The voice told me that I was going to find it. And it was going to be a little hard on me. I was just baffled, but I couldn't tell anybody. I mean, it was just something that was happening with me. So about, you know, I let that go. About, I say within two months, I heard a voice again. We had a, a grown a, a grown man that used to come up. He was kind of slow, but he would come up to the teachers, uh, the school, and they would give him money to go pay the light bill downtown. Just a little, he was just a little errand man, but he was too old to be hanging around with us kids. I was in elementary school, so Rover—that's what we call him, Rover. But this particular Sunday, my mother and I had went to the grocery store, and as we were getting ready to take the groceries to the car, I said, Mama, can I walk home? It's a pretty morning. It's still early Sunday morning. And so she says, uh, yeah, I guess you could go, because all the bad people, they still sleep. You could go ahead and walk home. I'll meet you at the house. So she drives off. And I'm just skipping, skipping, skipping. And we lived in the projects. And it's, picture a straight path, a street, or just a road. And you look to your left, you see a path, a cut through, and in, in leading to the projects. Now, you can walk a little further and don't take that cut, that shortcut. So that's what we usually do, take the shortcut. But before I got equal to that shortcut, I heard the voice again, and it says, don't take the shortcut, stay on this side of the street. And I was so glad to hear it, I said, oh, that's the voice again, the voice again. I was happy, happy, happy. And then I heard this sound, psst, psst. I think it was a bird, I'm looking like, what is that? Psst. I kept walking real slow. But I knew I wasn't going to cross the street because that's what the voice told me not to do. Don't stay on this side of the street. I looked across the street because this, this sound was still there. And I looked, who would rover standing in the path where I would have been had I crossed this street? Rover was standing and went there with his pants down to his ankle. And he was masturbating. But at that time, I didn't know what that was. But I know he was doing some dirty stuff to be standing there naked like that. So I took off running and screaming and screaming. My daddy and my brother came. And they, by the time they got to that path, Rover was gone. So that's the second time I've heard from that voice. And there, there are so many other times I've heard it. But I still didn't tell my mother about it. But. You know, we all were, they were having revivals and stuff. And, you know, we, we had to get in church and get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. We did all that. At least I did. I don't know. There was a lot of kids playing like they were saved and speaking in tongues. They were making it up. But I didn't get the Holy Ghost at church. I got it at home. I was the only person at home that day. And I started praising and thanking God and just, just feeling so good. Then I started speaking in tongues, and I couldn't stop. My jaw uh, was just like that. I, 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 I couldn't. It was like yeah, I did. I couldn't stop, and I couldn't stop speaking this language. And I grabbed myself and hugged myself and said, "Mary, stop, stop." 
And I finally calmed myself down enough to go to sleep. And my mother came in that, from work that evening. She gently touched me. She said, Mary, wake up. I woke up. First thing came out of my mouth, I was still speaking in tongues. So my mother knew then that it was really the Holy Ghost. You know, it wasn't something I had to do at church and make the people believe that the Holy Ghost had visited me. But this is what I'm saying. There are millions and millions of different things that have happened to me that I can't explain. And when I saw my mother's body in a casket when I was like 17, when I saw that, she was in a pink gown, a pink casket, and I saw this in the church. Six months later, I actually, this really happened. Pink coffin and pink gown and, and my mother's dead. She was she was wasn't supposed to do that. It took me years to get over that. I stayed. I cried every day. She died in nineteen seventy one. I cried every day till nineteen seventy four when my oldest son was born. So I said, Oh my baby, me and my baby can't be crying at the same time. So I stopped crying every day to keep my baby from crying. But Sister Carrie, is is we are not the only people that are like that, and I don't know what it is, intuition, or what it is, but that when uh, the gift of prophecy came, and where I would actually talk and say, it was predicaments. I would say this, but I hated that. It made my chest hurt, but. I had gotten to the point after my mother died, I, I actually told God, I can't do this. I don't want to do it. Please leave me alone. I just don't like it. And even the pastor of the church, show you how vain people can be. And they're even in the church and they can lead you, just blindly lead you, put a carrot of apple in front of your nose and just make you do what they want you to do. He got very upset with me. He says, Daughter, you're not giving the prophecies anymore. The church got to have a prophet. You get yourself, your mind on God and consecrate yourself so you can keep these prophecies going because we haven't had a prophet in the church for I don't know how long. And he was putting pressure on me. And a lot of things happened in the 70s. And I got married and had my child in 1974. But I saw a lot of things that I was not supposed to see in his church. And it's kind of like in the scripture, uh, Isaiah said, the year in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw, saw the Lord. So my mother, I believe she had to die for me to see because she was this blocking, no, oh, I don't want you to see this. Uh -uh, don't, no, 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 don't talk about this. So she stayed in the way so I couldn't, it's, it's a protection for me to not see things. And I began to see things. What was, it's not, not a premonition, it's just stuff that people were doing. I asked God to take all that away from me and it would not go away. The prophecies left me, verbally speaking prophecies left, and then the visions, I, I kept seeing vision, and then the dreams, the dreams, and the dreams were hard because the dreams are, for me, the dreams are never what they symbolize in my head. It's like it's upside down or something. If I dream about a a broom or a car, a red car, it, it doesn't mean a red car. It means something else. So I had to figure out what that was, but Honey, 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 it, it is okay. But the thing about it, for me, I have to go into seclusion and don't let the end of the world, these prophecies that you be given, don't let that consume you because you won't be able to hear the silence of God. And God, for me, didn't repeat a lot of things. That thing's God told me one time and I ignored it and it was really 
important that I pay attention and it felt like God kicked me. Didn't I tell you this was going to happen? And I said, oh my God. And I had to get the car back on the road. So don't let uh, the end of the world and people gathering in ships and I don't know about all that, the second exodus, don't let all of that consume you because the answer is it's got to be simple. It's got to be. And what we're doing right now, we're all collecting these dots, in mon- just dots everywhere. But we don't know how to draw the lines to draw the picture because you might have a dot here and a dot there and a dot there. But you might want to draw a line across rather than go horizontal, uh, vertical. And you may be drawing the wrong thing. So just, just get the the dots and then connect them in the end but don't let nobody else connect your dots for you okay but this is for you because baby you called my name and i know i wasn't gonna do no video about about what you were saying but your spirit touched me today and when when i saw i felt your spirit the humbleness in your spirit because you didn't call nobody a dirty a dirty Caesar, the dirty whatever. You're always calling people dirty and wicked and dirty, but you didn't do that. And I said, well, she's real humble today. And so I was able to hear what you said, but don't, don't. And you don't sound like you're afraid, but you, you're probably, you said your mother has this gift too. And it's... I don't understand it either. I don't. There's so many things that happen. I could tell you. I could write a book about things that have happened in my life. Baby, baby, baby. And the only thing you can do is surrender and keep a few things to yourself. Save some for yourself. Because you, you can't give at the office and give at home and give on YouTube. You got to save some energy for yourself. Okay? Anyway, many blessings to you. Bye-bye.